Dexter Pottinger was the face of the Jamaican fashion scene and was a proud gay man who lived a positive and exciting life up until his murder, which shocked friends, family, and the entertainment industry. Why would someone snuff out the flame of a genuine, kind person that was so loved by many? I'm gonna take a deep dive into Dexter Pottinger and I will discuss the circumstances of his death and the shocking reasoning behind his own demise. Dexter Pottinger was born on November 6, 1982. He was raised with his siblings in the Waltham Park area of Kingston, Jamaica. Growing up, he didn't really have the support of his loved ones when he came out as gay. But later on in life, his family grew to accept him. Before he reached his teens, Pottinger had his eyes on fashion. He had designed cheerleader outfits and used plastic bags to create garments. And when he was 11 years old, he had organized his own fashion show in the middle of the street with girls who lived in the community with all of the outfits being constructed out of newspaper. It was said that Pottinger was discovered around 2000 in the lobby of the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. He had apparently walked by a model named Althea Lang and she invited him to enter the nationwide Faces of Summer Model Search, which was organized by Saint International, a boutique-style fashion model agency and diverse lifestyle media, communication, and television production company based in Kingston, Jamaica. He then went on to compete in the Fashion Face of the Caribbean, and he modeled and danced in many Saint International productions over the years. Pottinger's focus had shifted to working behind the camera, and so he had traveled to London and connected with photographers in order to explore photography and fashion images. As well, he was mentored, and during his mentorship, he gained experience in styling, developing looks, makeup composition, and subject movement in front of the camera. Then in 2005, Pottinger won St. International's avant-garde designer of the year and made a memorable impression at Fashion Block where he made a camouflage collection with Nakisha Robinson and supermodel Stacey McKenzie walked the runway for his debut. Afterwards, Pottinger opened up his first retail store and created his own custom line called the 3D Line. He offered designs for men and women that ranged from urban street chic and edgy to elegant and classy, inspired by his many travels around the world. He said, once I'm traveling, I'm coming up with something big and crazy. Some people use the internet to find inspiration, but for me, I have to see it for myself. I have to see the fabric and pull elements from the culture to put into a piece and bring it to life. Pottinger had the opportunity to collaborate with dancehall artists like Cecile, Tiffa, Lady Saw, and Beanie Man, and worked with Nick Cannon on the 2016 movie King of the Dance Hall. Pottinger was also the face of Pride during Pride Week in 2016, organized by the Jamaica Forum of Lesbians, All Sexuals, and Gays. At the time of the celebrations, he said, I hope that my participation will show members of JFLAG that it is okay to come out in an atmosphere where there is no violence. Realize that it's your time to be part of the change, not just for the week, but permanently as part of the community. It was hard for me as a youngster, but now my mother understands me more and my dad is cool. My siblings are also cool with me and my brother works with me. Pottinger had a lot going for him in terms of his career and his accomplishments in life, but that all took a turn after meeting 21-year-old Romario Brown. Brown also worked in the same industry as Pottinger 
as a makeup and graphic artist, but was not as successful as Pottinger. And at the time, he was also a tattoo artist. 34-year-old Pottinger had met Brown at Halfway Tree, a neighborhood in Kingston, Jamaica, where he was handing out flyers to promote his tattoo studio. Brown was already known to police in connection with the murder of a woman named Alexia back in 2016. According to evidence in that case, Brown and Alexia were engaging in intercourse when an argument developed and he squeezed her throat and kicked her off the bed. And her body was later discovered by her two roommates when they returned to the shared apartment. Brown had stolen her phone and a laptop belonging to her boyfriend and had fled the scene after the incident, but was picked up by security cameras. Phone records also showed that he was the last person to speak with her. Brown was charged with murder and simple larceny. According to Brown, he had no intention of killing her. Brown was out on bail for that murder, but was in jail for an unrelated weapons charge, where he was arrested for being in possession of two knives. Even though Pottinger had only known Brown for a week, he took it upon himself to bail him out on August 29, 2017, just two days before Pottinger was found dead. On August 31, 2017, at 5.30 p.m., Pottinger was discovered stabbed to death upstairs in the bedroom of his home in the Washington Gardens neighborhood of Kingston. Pottinger's brother had went to his home to check on him because he could not be reached. According to police, there was blood everywhere, and Pottinger's neighbors stated that they heard Pottinger cry out in pain and heard screaming in the early hours of the morning, but they hesitated to contact authorities. Police had also discovered that a flat screen television, a watch, and Pottinger's Honda CRV motor vehicle were missing. In less than 24 hours after Pottinger's body was discovered, Brown was charged with murder but pleaded guilty to the lesser offense of manslaughter. After admitting in his statement that he did kill Pottinger but only because Pottinger provoked him, Brown also admitted to stealing Pottinger's belongings and helped the police recover them. Brown stated that Pottinger had invited him to his Yariko Place residence in St. Andrew to have a drink while discussing investment plans and ideas for his tattoo studio. They were talking on the balcony of the house while Brown was using a knife to cut up ganja, which is marijuana, and Pottinger left the balcony and indicated that he would return soon, and he eventually returned to Brown naked with his private part noticeably aroused. Brown alleged that he was not aware that Pottinger was even gay and was surprised by the act and that's when he took out a knife and stabbed him 25 times. According to Dancehall star Cecile, Pottinger was famously known as being gay and so she found it hard to believe his statement. She said, I have nothing to say except that Dexter is the most known gay personality in Jamaica. To say one didn't know? That statement alone confirms that the depiction of the entire scenario is inaccurate. Brown was ultimately sentenced in May 2019. However, loved ones of Pottinger were unhappy with the sentencing as Brown would only have to spend 12 years for the crime of manslaughter. Romaria Brown, the 23-year-old killer, was sentenced to 12 years for manslaughter, four years for larceny, and one year for simple larceny. The sentences are to run concurrently, which means Mr. Brown will end up spending only 12 years in prison. Pottinger's siblings had advocated for Brown to serve the maximum sentence of life in prison through their victim impact statement. However, the judge was not so easily swayed. The judge pointed out that the maximum sentence for manslaughter was life imprisonment, in handing down the 12-year sentence, presiding judge Shelley Williams said she was not going to follow the sentencing guidelines for manslaughter based on the circumstances surrounding the case. The judge says she took into account Mr. Brown's good social inquiry report, 
the almost two years that he has been locked up and the fact that he pleaded guilty to committing the crime. This despite the fact that Mr. Brown was on bail for murder when he killed Mr. Pottinger. But on the flip side, the judge said she also took into consideration the fact that Mr. Brown waited for days before accepting that he had killed Mr. Pottinger. Pottinger's sister Tashan was understandably upset with the results of the case. Our brother was taken from us, so we wanted the um, accused to be convicted of murder. But mm -hmm. given the circumstances and the judge explaining herself, and she sent him to 17 years, um, I guess it's just a case of you can take what you can get. Tashan had also mentioned that details of the case were left out and that the courts only trusted the account of the accused instead of actual physical evidence. Facts. With respect to the details of the case, um, a, lot of, a lot of details were left out. And I don't think it makes sense that Jamaica's judicial system is just using the accused account of things as the whole truth when that's not, that's not the case, when physical evidence is pointing to something else. According to the family, during the investigation, there was talk about another man who was apparently present when Pottinger was killed. However, authorities have not investigated another person of interest in his death, and it is unlikely that they ever will. Brown had also pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter for the killing of 20-year-old Alexia, and so was sentenced to 14 years and 10 months. And the sentence will begin after he completes the 12-year prison term for Pottinger's death. Several of Pottinger's loved ones spoke candidly about him. He was somebody that I know that when I felt insecure about something, you'd almost reach out to him because it was a one person that you know it's just gonna make you feel scarce. He's a sweetheart, I have a loving heart. I don't think I want him no better than who I'm still. Gay or not, I love him that way. He wasn't afraid to, to just live and do him. Pottinger's sister, Lakeisha Arendt, described him as the backbone of her family. She said he was open-minded, honest, and very firm when it came on to teaching his younger siblings life lessons on how to function as independent adults. He was forever the voice of reason. He was the one who kept everybody grounded. Dexter was the life of the party because he believed in living his best life. That is all for now on this case. Let me know your thoughts on it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time on Melanin Mysteries.